The next step is to resize our panels, especially the logo that is huge. So to do that, I'm going to zoom out on my document, press Ctrl T, keep the Shift key down, and resize the logo. I'm going to make it pretty small. Next up, I want to remove the white around it. To do that, I'm going to pick the contiguous color selector, and I'm going to click on the white with the default parameter should do the trick and press the delete key. It will be enough for this example. Then I want to do the same with the drawing, but we will have maybe to change its position on the canvas or to resize it multiple times. We can do that in a non-destructive fashion if we right click on it and select transform mask. When you have a transform mask in the layers docker, you can select it, press Ctrl T, and you can transform your item, but none of the original transform data will be lost. And that's the power of it. So now I'm scaling it down so it fits the guides as best as possible. If we hide the transform mask, you can see that we get our original layer. And whenever we activate our transform mask, we can see the transformed layer. Okay, so same thing will happen with the panel and the banner at the bottom. Right click, add a transform mask, and I'm going to place it down there, scale it up this time, so that the frame of the drawing fits the guides. You can zoom in, obviously, to do as precise of a job as possible. All right, there it's good. Note that you can still use the move tool thereafter, and move your original layer down like that. I'm going to leave a bit of space between the upper drawing and the second panel. Then I'm going to maybe select the banner at the bottom. I want it to be way smaller. Maybe we'll put it in the bottom right corner of our page. And then I'll put the logo in the upper left corner of the page like that. From experience, I know that on an A4 sheet of paper, this upper portion that's going beyond the guides won't be cut. In general, if there's a bit of a cut in there, it's only right along the borders of the sheet. It's going to be going beyond the guides a little in that case. The logo will balance out the little drawing in the bottom right corner of our page. I'm going to hide the rulers. And the next thing I want to do is to only have the actual drawing showing in the panels. The way to do that is to add a new layer in here at the bottom of our page. And we are going to make selections in that case. I'm using the guides with snapping to make a selection that fits within the frame outlined by the guide. And in that case, I'm going to fill the selection in here with any color, really. A pretty visible color is good. I'm going to put this layer at the top with control page up and lower its opacity a little so we can see the drawing showing through it. Same thing will happen to the panel and I'm going to fill in here. Now we can put that layer at the bottom and inside of the group. If you expand the group and press Control page up while the layer is below the group, it will get inside of it right at the bottom. Then I want to group all of my panels in a new group and check the Inherit Alpha option. We'll inherit the alpha channel of this layer at the bottom. It's a very powerful feature. And then I just want this logo outside of the group so that it goes beyond the frame of the guides. Last but not least, we have our little banner at the bottom. Down here, I'm just going to keep the drawing. Let's use an elliptical selection tool for that. and only keep that portion of the layer. Control X, Control V. I select the layer again and press Shift Delete. 
now we can have some kind of bubble at the bottom right of the page and still the logo in the top left corner and have a somewhat balanced page. A last thing we can do to clean up our document is to select that bottom part, press Ctrl X, Ctrl V. So we still have it in here. We have the layer selected and I'm going to press Shift R and click on my panel to select the corresponding picture. And then I'm using the move tool and I'm going to play with the height of the panel in here. So it's moving both the mask layer and the actual panel, the actual drawing it will contain. So that way I can find a good margin between my two drawings. So now what I'm going to do is group my panels and the masks together. And I'm going to apply a new transform mask to the group itself. I'm going to move it down that way so that the panels are centered on the page. We have two drawings, a logo in the top left and a little badge in the bottom right corner of the page. We have a somewhat balanced page. And that's it for this example. You have the worksheets available along with the video to do it on your own. That's your assignment for the grid guides and snapping demonstration.